Hello, welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm very happy to bring you another amazing video. So it's a video on another AI tool that I recently explored and I've been using ever since. It's a tool called Chichi AI or CC AI, depending on how you want to pronounce it. It's totally up to you. But it's a tool that's similar to ChatGPT and if you have used ChatGPT before, getting used to this tool is not gonna be difficult. Now there are a number of reasons why I like it and that's what we'll go through in the video as well. Now, first and foremost, to access this particular AI tool or website, you know, the link is right here. I'll also leave it in the description so you can you know, click on it and access it. But as soon as you go to the web page and you log in, you'll see a number of things that it can do as you see on my screen uh, right here. So let's go through the things it can do and let's experience a few things together, all right? And then I'll leave you all to explore and tell me what you did and whether you liked it or not. So first and foremost, one of the key things it can do is AI search, right? AI search, very simply meaning that depending on your prompt, goes up to the web, brings down relevant search results, and tells you what it is. The second thing it can do, and this is the one I use quite often, is the read and summarize option, where you can upload a file like a PDF, like a presentation, a document, Excel and CSV files, and you can ask questions to the document. And the results are quite nice. So you can, we'll, we'll go through a small sample of that as well. Then you have the write for me where the AI bot can write blogs, articles, marketing ads, emails. It can help you compose all of these things uh, very efficiently. You have image generation that can craft images of various forms. You can summarize web pages and you have a number of different, other different options like translations. It supports a lot of languages. Uh, you can use one of the many templates that they have also. And we'll see all of these things in the video. So if you look at the left-hand side here, you'll see many of these options that you can directly go to and start interacting with. You also have a number of bots that have been built by the team itself. So bots such as the AI artists, you have the English tutors, uh, you have the, uh, let's say the book talk, for example. So all of these are bots that you can just start interacting with, all right? You also have other bots created by different people that you can try and experience and you can create your own bot if you want and you can publish that other people can use your bot all right similar to how you do it on OpenAI. now let's go through the four options here one by one and and see what it can do and just you know go through a small sample understand it and try it out the first one is the AI search. That's what I've clicked on on the left-hand window. And once I'm in the AI search area, it gives you some hints as to you know what this can actually be, what this can actually do. So it highlights certain articles that you can click, and it'll bring you relevant sources, or you can type in your own prompt, and then you can search. So let's say for example, I want the latest AI news in marketing. All right. Again, this is just a random prompt. I haven't tried it out before. But what it's trying to do it's tr is that it's trying to search the web. It's trying to bring relevant content from various different sources. As you can see, these are all the different sources here. It gives you those sources in the response as well. And you can go through you know, each one of them and then go to the sources. So for example, it says, okay, since you asked about marketing AI news, these are some of the things that it found. So the first thing it found was MarTech, marketing artificial intelligence content. So there's a number of stuff you know, about MarTech here and that has all the AI news. It talks about influencer marketing hub. It's another source which has um, AI marketing news. So it's giving me all that, in, you know, all the information about where I can go and find AI marketing news and what is a summary of each of those source of information. So it's quite good. And you can go in and type uh, any kind of problem that you want, 
see the results, right? If you want to see, let's say, the latest Tesla news, for example, then you can just type in, I want the latest Tesla news, or you can type in a certain event. It'll bring you the news of, you know, anything that you want. And it's not about news. It can actually do any relevant search and bring down the sources. So here, you know, when I typed in Tesla news, it gave me, you know, a lot of different news uh, references for a lot of different dates. So you know, I can go and look at the different sources. I can go and look at what happened on each of those dates as well. So quite nice to say the least, right? It puts it in a way that you can start interacting with it and start making it better. The other thing also is that it gives you suggestions based on what it thinks you're looking for. Right? For example, it's, it says, okay, maybe you can type the prompt like this, which is what are the latest updates on Tesla's autonomous driving technology? And it'll bring you relevant information with respect to that. All right, so it's quite uh, good, quite informative. That's the first thing that it can do. Second thing is the write for me option. And once you click on the write for me option, it brings up a window on the right hand side that says that, okay, it can either compose or reply and it can do a number of things under each of those uh, categories. For example, in the compose category, it can compose essays, paragraphs, emails, ideas, blog posts, so on and so forth, right? The style of writing can be defined as well. How do you want it? Let's say you want informational, funny, enthusiastic, for example, how long or short you want the particular composition to be. So let's say I want a marketing ad and let's say I'm marketing my six months data science program. Assume that I have a program. Let's say I want to market that, all right? So I'm going to type in, I want to create a marketing campaign for a six months data science program that can be taken up by professionals. All right. I can also put down information like the program has 100 hours of live teaching and covers machine learning and SQL. All right. Again, it's just a sample. I'm just putting in things that I'm thinking about right now during the video. And then you can say, you know, create a nice Instagram or let's say Facebook um, ad copy for me, okay? So it brings up the prompt here and it says, okay, this is what you can do as an enthusiastic medium size copy. All right. Um, again, it asks a number of questions based on what it thinks you may need or what you're looking for. So you could add those relevant things to the marketing copy as well. Now, similarly, you can go ahead and write essays, develop blog posts for your website, for example. It gives you a good starting point, all right? Don't just take the whole thing and put it on your website or just copy the whole thing. Use it as a starting point, tweak it, and then take it ahead from there, all right? The next thing is about image generation. Now, image generation is fast becoming one of the most widely used uh, piece of content because people want to generate images based on their thoughts, right? So in this tool, once you click on the image generation on the left, it brings you to a section which has some pre-canned templates that can be a starting point for you. So if you say use template, it brings the prompt here. You can add to this prompt, you can edit this prompt, you can use this prompt any which way you like. And you have a number of different categories that you can choose from, all right? And the templates in the different categories also look quite well made or well done in terms of the output. So you can try using those as a starting point. I'm just going to be a little, you know, enthusiastic and say, okay, I want something in the anime category. I love anime. So I'm going to say that, okay, I want a Kyoto themed fighting scene with a girl. Uh, wearing a red dress 
and long hair all right very short from i haven't defined something with too much of detail because what i would wa probably want to do is i would want to iteratively improve the prompt and make it better and better so if you look at what i got the moment i typed the prompt i got a few of these images which actually look quite good right they're not very bad they are in that you know kind of style that i'm i'm looking for as well now as you can see below the image it gives you some suggestions of what more you could potentially add to the image right so it says okay i can add some traditional japanese architecture um, i can add some cherry blossom trees or uh, specific weapons or fighting stances so maybe let's say can you add a katana or a sword uh, in the image and the girl should be holding the katana All right that's atrocious english english but let's try to get past that and uh, let's try to see what it can do all right so what my intent was is that i want a katana and i want the girl in the image to be holding it so not bad it did a very good job and as you can see now you have some weapons there um, that the girl is holding right so this is how you can iteratively improve the image right you can um, adjust the background to come you know to complement the new element there are particular color themes that you can add i can say you know can you change the the girl's dress in the image to steel blue now i don't know how it looks again it's an iterative trial and error way to get to what you want and the best part is you can continuously keep working on the same set of images till you reach somewhere that you you know like so this is great i i like this much better probably if you know as compared to the red uh, this is something i would you know go with this is an image that i can take and actually uh, use somewhere so that's one of the image generation capabilities that you can make use of as well so it's quite good and you can interact with it quite well it has a number of templates to start you off so on and so forth all right those are the first three things the last thing we're going to see in the video is about read and summarize so this is where it says that you can add up to 50 files and the file size each file size should not exceed 100 megabytes and there are a number of supported files like pdfs text files csvs doc files and others now what i'm going to try to do is i'm going to try and upload a csv file to this okay, let's see if i have one All right so this csv file has some data so let's say you are from the data analytics field you want to do some data analysis and you have an Excel or CSV file, you can upload it and you can say, can you summarize the data for me? And let's start with that. And then maybe let's see where we can go from there. What are the other things you can do? You can upload books, you can upload papers and you can say, okay, you know, give me a summary. You can ask questions, specific questions uh, to the file as well. So I asked you to summarize the file and it says, Okay, by the way, the file primarily has a list of games, a list of consoles you can play the game on, what are the critic ratings, what are the total sales, and certain other things like that, all right? And this is what I've asked of it, and this is what it's given me. So it says that the most popular console is, you know, are these, <clears throat> these are some of the top selling games, uh, this is the most popular uh, game genres, the critic scores, what is the average and so on now what i can do is i can ask it for you know i can ask it specific questions right i can ask can you give me the game that has the total the highest total sales so 
So it says, okay, you know, the game with the highest total sales is uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 with a total sales of 20 odd million units, right? I can also ask it questions like, if I were to create a game, which console should I create the game for? Right. Now I know console is part of the data. So what I'm trying to do is I'm, going to, I'm trying to ask the bot to look at the file and then give me some deductions based on the file and my question. So it says uh, PS4 would be the best option for you to choose as it has the most top selling games. Um, it has, you know, a variety of popular games. It's a relatively newer console. The data is a bit older, of course, but uh, it's able to easily tell me based on my question and based on the data, what console I should create my game for. So that's quite nice. It can't create plots for you yet, but it will give you the code to plot something if you want in, in a language of your choice, like Python or R or um, Excel, for example. So, <clears throat> I find this to be quite interesting because it's a quick way for you to get some insights from your data without having to write code. If you are in a hurry, if you want to do some quick deductions, you want to ask some questions, some challenging questions, this is a quick way to get that started, right? So these are four things that are quite interesting. Obviously you can do a number of other things using this AI assistant. You can summarize web pages, you can summarize different sorts of documents. You can uh, you know, ask it to be your tutor or your companion for that matter of sorts, your fitness coach. So I don't know how you intend to use it, but if you are somebody who is working in any role and uses tools like GPT or uh, Meta AI or others, this is one you can consider as well. Right? Try it out and let me know what you think about it. Okay, I think that's uh, all for this video. It's gonna be a short and sweet one just to give you an introduction of the tool and what it can do. Let me know if you would like to see any tool in particular. I'll try to explore it and give you a brief about the tool as well. Put it down in the comments and uh, I'll be happy to look it over. Also, let me know in the comments whether you tried the tool and if you did, whether you liked it, what did you try, what's the best thing that you liked, what's the the thing that you did not like all right and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well we're very close to that uh, 100 subscriber mark as you can see uh, there right on the top somewhere here so let's try to hit our goal and that will keep me motivated to bring you some more awesome content all right so till then stay safe keep learning and uh, if you need anything in terms of uh, tools you want to explore, don't forget to like the video and write your requirement in the comments. I'll be happy to help you guys out. Bye-bye and uh, take care.